Okay, so we're starting, I believe it's part four of auto rotations. And you guys have probably noticed in several of the videos so far, both the classroom videos where we're talking about auto rotations, and in the flight videos where we're doing full down auto rotations and power recovery auto rotations. Then I mentioned several times if you lose the engine and that you only have a few seconds to get the collective down, or you're going to get a blade stall and you're going to die. And unfortunately, that's true. But I don't want to leave you with the impression that helicopters are inherently dangerous or aviation itself is inherently dangerous. It's not. But aviation is very unforgiving of mistakes and lapses of judgment. All right? And of the two, probably lapses in judgment are the major cause of accidents. And if we look at certified versus experimental helicopters, it's a far cry difference between the causes of one versus the other. If you look at certified helicopters, certified helicopters specifically and you look at the causes of accidents you'll find and you can go to the NTSB aviation accident database and put in helicopters put in a couple different brands of, of uh, certified helicopters and look at the causes of accidents within certified helicopters you're going to find out that about 95 percent of the time or greater the cause of the accident is pilot error it's very unusual for component failure on a certified aircraft to cause an accident. It's very unusual to have a component failure on a certified helicopter. Right? That's not true when you get to experimental helicopters. When you look at experimental helicopters, you could do the same thing. Go into the NTSB search engine, pull up a couple different um, uh, brands of experimental helicopters and look at what causes the accidents in experimental helicopters. In experimental helicopters, component failures more often than not are the cause of the accident now they still have a high number of pilot uh, error as a cause of the accident but that's mostly because the pilots that fly them a lot of times don't have the training uh, that pilots that are flying certified helicopters have obtained so training makes a big difference as well right but if you look at the difference between the two there's a blaring difference between certified helicopters and experimental helicopters and i'm probably going to do a video just on one versus the other and unfortunately i've got some students that i taught how to fly that actually bought experimental helicopters and I'll, it'll be a happy day when they get rid of those damn things and buy a certified helicopter right because again component failure can be the root cause of the accident a lot of times with experimental helicopters and it's a very unusual cause of an accident in a certified helicopter right so I mentioned several times about if you're flying along and you lose the engine if you don't get to collect it down you're gonna get a blade stall and you're gonna die but how about a gyroplane we're flying along in our gyroplane and the engine quits is that any big great big event not at all because we're already in auto rotation there is no collective to lower the aircraft's not going to suddenly get a blade stall and fall out of the sky. If I lose the engine in a, in a gyroplane, in fact, I've, only, I've actually shut one down one time. But if I lost the engine in a gyroplane, all I have to do is pick out a spot to land. And if I keep my speed up, just like in a helicopter, if I keep the speed up during the descent in the emergency landing, and I get down to the bottom, I can flare and float it much, long, uh, much longer. And by the time I actually touch the wheels down on the gyro, I'm only going to be moving across the ground about 10, 10 knots is about it. So potentially the gyroplane is much safer than a helicopter. It literally is. In the case of an engine failure, there's no question. You're already in an auto rotation in the gyroplane. You don't have to worry about getting the collective down. So the gyroplanes are potentially safer in the case of an emergency than are the helicopters. Right? Now, that doesn't mean that all gyroplanes are created equal. There are some significant differences between one gyroplane and the other. And there are some design characteristics that are very favorable in a gyroplane, and there are some design characteristics that you want to avoid like the plague that lend themselves towards uh, accident and incident occurrences, right? And I'm going to end up doing an additional video on gyroplanes and I'm going to outline all the particular characteristics that you want to see in the gyroplane that you're flying and all of the ones that you want to avoid again like the plate because there's a, there's a significant difference between the two. I'll just tell you that the Magni gyroplane has all the desirable characteristics and we'll go through that in an additional uh, video in the not too distant future.